How's it going, Rogues Gallery? Today we're talking about Kaldheim, Magic's most metal set ever. Or is it? That's right, we're gonna talk about Kaldheim today. I'm gonna give you my full opinions on this set, both as a lifelong Magic the Gathering player I've been playing since 1995, as well as a lifelong metalhead. The only reason I bring that up at all is because Kaldheim was heavily marketed as Magic's most metal set ever. There was the, the Kaldheim Fest, there was all of the, the marketing, all of the promotions, all that stuff. So we're gonna talk about that in today's video. I'm gonna give you my opinions of all of that stuff, like I said, both from a Magic the Gathering, you know, lifelong player point of view, but also as a lifelong metalhead. Before we get started, I do wanna mention if you would like to support the channel, definitely check out my Patreon. I have some tiers there where I give some cards and booster packs Back to you. Currently, it's all flesh and blood stuff, but uh, you know, let me know if you'd like to, you know, branch off into Magic: The Gathering at all, or check out my TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below if you'd like to pick up Magic: The Gathering or any other current card game. You know, use that affiliate link, and it also supports me. So you know, I greatly appreciate it. You get some sweet cards, and I get you know a little bit on the back end. But enough of that. Let's start talking about Kaldheim. So I'll be completely honest. When Kaldheim was first announced, I was kind of like, eh, on the idea. I was like, you know, maybe it'll be cool, maybe not. I guess I'll have to wait and see. I wasn't really super excited or stoked for it. But, you know, as time went on, I got more and more excited for it. I saw some of the key art, and I was like, you know, that looks really cool. They could do some really cool stuff with that, especially if they go, like, all-in Viking kind of theme. I didn't realize they were going to be, like, you know, Viking and also, like, metal, but, you know... That's cool. In fact, on paper, that sounds like the perfect set for me. You know, once again, lifelong metalhead, lifelong Magic the Gathering player, melding two of my favorite things of all time into one seemed on paper like the perfect, perfect thing for me. It's like the set was like made for someone like me. But, well, let's start talking about some of the, some of the butt there. So the first thing I want to talk about and kind of the most negative thing I have to say has to do with Kaldheim's marketing, right? So they're heavily marketing this as Magic's most metal set ever. And they did some really good things. And they did some things that I thought were super lame. So the things that I thought they did really right, um, they actually gave some excellent metal bands preview cards uh, for Kaldheim. And I thought that was awesome. You know, some of my personal favorite bands of all time, you know, I'm not going to gatekeep any metal heads or, you know, gatekeep any metal fandoms out there because there's a lot of different genres of metal and there's a lot of different fandoms out there. Personally, I like melodic death metal. I love Dark Tranquility. I love At The Gates. And I also like Amon Amarth. And Amon Amarth was one of the bands that they got to do a spoiler. They got to do the spoiler for the, um, the White God of War card. I thought that was really awesome. And they gave it to, you know, some bunch of other bands too, like Lacuna Coil. And uh, I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. I saw them all on Twitter and I thought that was awesome. You know, I saw it and I was like, yo, they're actually going all in. They got some good bands, you know, like some actually deep cut, not super deep cut, but some like deep cut, excellent metal bands. So I was like really pumped really good metal bands, the cards looked really cool, that uh, God of Battle, you know, with the God on one side and then the sword on the other, and it was like this kind of really sweet looking sword. Though I do want to mention that the sword sounded way better than the card actually is. It's not a bad card, but like the name of the sword and like the implications in the story made it seem like it would be much more powerful than it actually is. It's not even like better than like a Sword of Fire and Ice or something like that, you know? And that cranked my hopes really high up there. I saw these bands that they were like promoting with. I was like, yo, this is gonna be really sweet. And then I saw the Kaldheim Fest and don't get me wrong, I don't wanna talk too much about this, but I watched it and it was really kind of cringy and kind of lame and it felt very forced, um, very, very corporate, you know? It felt like someone was just breathing down and be like, you have to be as metal as possible, but you also have to be super family friendly and those two things don't exactly mesh. And don't get me wrong, I do like some of the people that were in this. Like, um, I like I like Jimmy Wong. I don't think he did a bad job. I think he did well with what he was given, but it was super cringy and kind of hard to watch a lot of the time. And um, yeah, that, that, that that's kind of like sums up most of the marketing 
in my opinions, on Kaldheim from like a Wizards of the Coast kind of thing where they're like trying to market it as metalheads like, oh, this would be really cool where it kind of missed the mark on a lot of things. Um, but you know, like I said, giving those bands, those preview cards was awesome. It would have been cool if, you know, those bands could talk a little bit more about it. But you know, maybe they didn't want to or maybe there was like too expensive. I don't really know the situation. But um, yeah, there was a bunch of like, Magic the Gathering people trying to be as metal as possible and did not come off super great. And you know, I was like, I guess this just isn't for me, at least the, the Kaldheim Fest, even though that this set on paper seems like it's made specifically for me, you know, long time Magic player, long time Metalhead, they pick bands that I love, you know, you'd think it would mesh together, but it felt like it was being marketed at someone who didn't really know what metal was or kind of knew what it was like second hand, you know, like their weird uncle listened to it or something, you know what I mean? But I kind of like, you know, gave it the benefit of the doubt and was like, you know what? Let's check out the trailer. Maybe the trailer's gonna be better. And then I watched the trailer and it was super underwhelming. Uh, the animation was fine, you know, Kaya fighting some dudes and then there's like Tybalt and he goes through a thing and not much actually happens. And there's some very super watered down generic metal music playing in the background. And that was, the, this is the biggest, um, the biggest missed opportunity because they could have gotten, you know, one of those awesome metal bands that they already collaborated with and they got spoiler cards for and gotten them to do a song, maybe a custom song, maybe one of their own songs. You know, Amon Amarth, for example, Twilight of the Thunder God, amazing song, could have put that in there. Maybe they didn't have the licensing rights. Maybe they couldn't afford it. I don't know, but it was a very like milk toast, boring metal song accompanied by a very milk toast, boring action sequence that really didn't do anything. Where is Vorinclex? You know, I'm not just a metalhead. I'm also a magic player too. Love Magic the Gathering, played it, you know, my entire life. Where's all the cool characters that's, that are in Kaldheim? You just have Kaya, some random jabronis, and uh, Tybalt. Where's Vorinclex? Isn't that like the, one of the most exciting things in the set that Vorinclex is here? Couldn't he like show up at the end and like cause like a, a ruckus or something? I don't know, man. They could have done so many different things with this. And it was just like kind of boring. The teaser trailer, however, was actually pretty sweet. Showed you a lot about Kaldheim, showed you like the, the, the big tree, like the Yggdrasil pseudo thing and um i thought the teaser trailer was really sweet but the actual like trailer no not that great you know it's fine you know it's fine but um can we like really get by on just fine these days i guess but you know doesn't really excite me all that much and all that excitement that i had you know kind of building up to it between the cow time fest and like the trailer just like just kind of went down not all the way not all the way because you know i still bought this um, because I was like, hey, still looks really sweet. The cards look really sweet. And you know, that kind of segues to the next bit. I think the cards are actually really sweet. And the art in the set, man, the art in the set is actually really metal and awesome. And I love the art in the set. Um, in fact, I have it pulled aside here. This is a collector booster that my girlfriend got for me for Valentine's Day. And I love the like metal lettering here the the metal font and the the hammer there this this looks sweet this looks really sweet and not only that but like the cards in here are very sweet not just the ones that i got you know i did get some really cool ones um but i really like the border here so i'll show you the the, the coolest card that i did get from this pack here i got uh, essica god of the tree and i love the border so viking looks Excellent. I showed this to one of my coworkers, uh, not this one in particular, but you know, this Viking border, one of my coworkers who's actually in like really into Viking stuff. And he thought this was awesome, you know, awesome enough that he would actually maybe buy some packs just to, you know, get some cool like Viking stuff. And obviously we've got to show the, the rainbow bridge on the back here. Um, and I, I really do like that. The showcase frames for Kaldheim are, are amazing. And like the alternate art, is so good, man. There's that uncommon angel, like the black, white, uncommon angel with the alternate art is so sweet, man. I just, I just absolutely love that. Here, let me find some other alternate art here. Oh yeah, here we have, the only other one I got was um, uh, Vega, the Watcher, not to be confused with um, Vega from Street Fighter, but like really sweet, man. Look at that. Really, really cool. And there's some other ones that are just, that are excellent. The, the artist that they chose for this, really, really good job here. I, I love it. I also really like the snow covered theme. You know, once again, lifelong magic player, loved um, Ice Age, Cold Snap was pretty cool and bringing back 
the 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 snow theme with these really sweet like snow frames and borders and stuff really cool I, I dig that quite a bit so the set the actual magic the gathering set is pretty cool dude i really like it is the is it the most metal set of all time i don't know maybe the jokester in me wants to say something like Mirrodin is the most metal set of all time, or maybe like New Phyrexia. New Phyrexia, yo, New Phyrexia was super metal without even trying to be metal. And this was trying, you know, it was definitely trying. There's like cards that have like thrown up the horns that are deflecting spells, like this, um, this Annul. Dude, here, let's see if we can see that. Dude is actually throwing up the devil horns, blocking that spell. That's pretty cool. You know, it's pretty cool, but uh, I don't know if it's trying too hard I, I still really like it I, I don't think it is trying too hard I think it's really cool and I can't really speak to the power level of the set I don't play standard there are some cards in here that I think would be really cool for commander which is one of the only formats I still play and some kind of cool stuff in here for Canadian Highlander which is another format that I really like and maybe some stuff in here for cube which are basically the only three magic formats I play anymore for me personally from a flavor point of view and an aesthetic point of view Kaldheim might be one of my favorite sets in recent memory. I don't even know, maybe one of my favorite sets of all time. I think the set is just really sweet in general as a set, but I think there's also a lot of missed opportunities here. Um, the marketing was hit and miss, basically. It was hit and miss. Loved the Metal Band preview cards. Not a fan of Kaldheim Fest. Loved the teaser trailer. Not a fan of the official trailer. And I'm actually pretty excited to open this up, which is going to be, you know, in a video or two down the road. Um, we're going to open this up and see what we get. This is going to be my very first set booster box opening because I completely skipped over uh, Zendikar. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to open this up and see what we get. I really liked um, uh, Modern Horizons, and I think that set is kind of like the precursor to this kind of thing. So, um, you know, because there's like one foil per pack, and there's the art series and like the special shenanigans. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to open this up. Um, let's see what cards we get. There's some really, like I said, some really sweet ones in here that I would like to get. Um, I've heard the value for the set currently isn't super great, which is not that big of a deal for me right now because I'm just buying this to have fun. You know, I'm not going to sell any of the cards in here. Um, I doubt there's anything in here that I pulled and be like, oh man, $200 card. I got to sell that. I don't think that, I don't think that's what we're going to do here, but, um, should be fun, man. Should be fun. Look at all the sweet art, all the really, really cool, um, alternate uh, art with the the sweet frames and I realize now the video is way too long and I am rambling final thoughts I think Kaldheim is a very cool set pun intended and um, it, it was so close man so close to being one of my favorite sets of all time it might still end up being one of my favorite sets of all time um, I didn't even talk about how I think the world was kind of like underused for this set they only go to like one of the realms or the realms really aren't quite explored maybe they don't maybe they go to more than one realm but they're, they're really not fully explored in this set and i think maybe like two or three sets in kaldheim could have been sweet man this would have been really great with the old like three block structure i know a lot of people didn't like the three block structure you know the third set's always like underwhelming or whatever but i think kaldheim really could have used all of that fleshing out you know Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Kaldheim in the comments down below. Did you pick any of it up? Are you excited to play it at all? Are you playing on Arena? Are you just skipping it completely? Do you like metal? Do I have any fans out there that are that are metalheads? Um, let me know in the comments down below. You know what? If you are watching this far and you are a metalhead out there, let me know what your favorite band is in the comments down below. There will be no metal gatekeeping in this video. If your favorite band is Disturbed, let it know. Let it be known in the comments down below. If your favorite metal band is um, Catatonia, getting some, some deep cuts here, let it be known in the comments down below. Or maybe like Opeth, Tool, Metallica, whatever it is. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time for some more card game content. Have a good one, all. See you later.